Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Well, today's going to be a series of firsts, or near firsts. First of all, uh, this is the first time I've been out here in the shop in quite a little while. I've been sick, had bronchitis, uh, kept thinking it was going to go away, so I didn't make a doctor appointment, and I waited, and I waited, and it wasn't going away, it was getting worse. So I finally called and uh, they got me in the next day and got me a prescription that fixed me right up. Second day I took that prescription I was already feeling better. And I'm not quite a hundred percent but I'm close and I'm close enough. So that's one first. First time out here in quite a little while. Another first is this is going to be a platter. This is a 15 inch piece of birch that I've had in the shop here for more than 40 years. Um, today's the day. About a year ago, I got a Sorby spiral texturing tools and I have used them. So in that sense, it's not a first, but I haven't used them for anything serious and I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm also a little intimidated by it, but we'll see how it goes. So my intention is to make about a three inch border on here and decorate that border and then color it somehow or another. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to color it. This is a first. It's the first time I'm going to actually use this uh, robust tool rest. Another first is I'm going to be turning on the low speed range of my lathe, which is the, the range is 40 to 1200. Oh yeah, what a work saver. Don't forget to stop. 31 is still 31. Well right off here I can see that it's not going to work. Because there's a little offset to this tool rest. The offset is actually on this side of the post rather than the other side. So I can't get up here close enough. I'm that far away before I hit the banjo. And that's too far away. We'll try that. We'll try it because I do want to give this a try. This has that hardened rod in the top of it. So we'll bring up the tailstock here. Close, not touching. And then what I like to do to be sure that I've got a dead center is I like to actually turn the lathe on and then advance the ram and let that live center find its own place and we've got it there another first is I'm going to use smaller than normal gouge just because I I want to take my time I want to get this right I don't want to waste any wood so I will be turning a little slower moving a little slower being less aggressive than I normally am so we'll start out with a half inch bowl gouge before I get started here, I forgot this is another first, uh, a long-awaited first for me and some of the viewers maybe. This is the first time in a very long time that I've done what you might call a normal piece of wood. Uh, no bark, no bug holes, no cracks, no crevices, no nothing, just a regular old piece of wood. Nothing, nothing expected to fly apart here. Expected being the key word. About 540 RPM to start out. Okay, we got it round. Let's see about truing up that bottom. Well, I can see this tool rest is not going to be my friend. Because I can't get in close enough. If I didn't have the tailstock there, it'd be fine. But I cannot get in there. So let's revert back to the stock rest.
Let me get it sharpened up. What a difference a sharp tool makes, huh? All right, let's get our, get marked for a recess. I'm gonna use a recess on this as opposed to a tenon. And my intention is to make an OG bottom. I suppose I should do some kind of layout, but I don't know what it would look like. Also, I'm going to change camera angles because I think I'm about to step in front of you. So I'm just doing a little bit of layout here. I need to, before I go too far with this edge, I need to uh, decide on how big my base is going to be for this to sit on. And I think something this big needs a stable base, so wide rather than so tall. So I think uh, if I were to use the rule of thirds, this is 15 inches. Uh, so that would be like a 9 inch base, come out here 4.5 inches from the center. But that brings me clear out here, which doesn't leave a lot of room for profiling. 4 inches make 8 inches, that seems a little small. So I'm going to go with four and a quarter, four and a quarter inches from the center. So that'll be our base. So I can profile this area and put my recess in here. that's not a defect I'm hearing a funny sound when it comes around maybe you could hear it too almost looks like a crack not quite maybe also I don't want to take this edge down too terribly far because I know I have to flatten the face the other side and I also have to leave myself enough room in case I screw up my decorating on the edge my spiraling or whatever it is I do over there that I have room enough to wipe it out and start over Now you don't need one of these uh, recess tools, dovetail recess tool, you don't need one at all. And sometimes I don't use it, but I have it. I bought it when I bought my first chuck. It's a Nova chuck and it's a Nova tool. And that was before I knew any better and thought I, thought I needed it. But as long as I have it, I'll use it. I need a good eighth inch depth here. See how flat all that is. Okay, I'm happy with that. 
I'm in there just over an eighth inch. I feel good about that. This is looking pretty good. And I think that'll stand up real nice. Now I still got a little refining to do out here. don't like having that edge so thick. That's uh, darn near a half inch. Well, I have to make a decision. Nobody's going to make it for me. Oh well. God hates a coward. Well, I have to say I'm glad I did that. Looks way better. Way, way, way better. My guess is it's about 5 sixteenths now. Maybe, maybe a little more. I think it's time to sand. I'm starting with 80 grit because as I said I'm not perfect and there are some tool marks in here. No, uh, actually they're, they're rub marks from the heel of the tool. You can see that shiny mark, that's a tool mark, so I got to keep sanding until that's gone. Over here I'm having a hard time getting up close to my base. So I'll probably have to hand sand that when I'm done with this. I'll just use the same uh, two inch sanding disc and get it in here with my finger a little better. And then I'll also uh, just alternate between forward and reverse. Looking good. So I'll do this hand sanding with the piece of grit that I go through. That does a pretty good job of removing that. Well, my sanding is finished. I decided to uh, apply my Sorby texturing tool and try and make a pattern right in this area here kind of halfway I guess I don't know how wide I'm gonna go and I don't really quite know what to expect I took this out of the package this is not the first time I've used it but it's darn near the first time I've used it and when I did use it it was about a year ago and I've forgotten everything I knew I did review the instructions a little bit. Like I said, this is a, a series of firsts on this one. I'm a little hesitant to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. So you're supposed to have the lathe running uh, around, whoops, probably not in reverse, around 500 RPM. I suppose that depends on where you are on the piece. If I was going to do this on the outside edge, like I will be on the top of it, I probably wouldn't run at 500 because it's really flying out here. So let's give it a go.
What do you think? I don't know if I love that or not. So I'm going to take my quarter inch spindle gouge and cut a groove here and here to highlight this. Well, that helped quite a bit. I guess I'll just go with that. Now, do I want to color this? I intend to color the other side. Boy, I wish I knew what I was doing. I know you guys that have this Sorby tool are just giggling at me right now, aren't you? Well, that's okay, I can take it, I'm a big boy. Color it or natural? Color it or natural? I'm inclined to go natural. Yep, natural it is. Okay, sanding sealer is next up. I'm going to apply this uh, sanding sealer with a rag, but I'm going to use a brush on my spiral here. If I decide this does need color, I can always add that on top of the sanding sealer. I'm pretty sure I can anyway. I don't think that'll be much of an issue. I don't think you add a dye on top of sanding sealer. I think that has to go on bare wood. I intend to remove this recess, but just in case I don't for some reason, I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Won't hurt anything, that's for sure. So this is going to be a day of finishing just the bottom. It's kind of late already in the day, uh, just about noon. And this will take like an hour to dry or something and I'll come out and use an abrasive pad to smooth it out and put on a second coat. So that at least gives us an idea of what it's going to look like. Another coat of this, sanding sealer, and then I think I'm just going to go with uh, wipe-on poly, several thin coats of wipe-on poly. So we'll see you back here later. So I've got two coats of uh, sanding sealer on here now, and now I even have a little chatoyance going on, and that's just with sanding sealer. Yeah, right there. Can you see that? Can you see that chatoyance? Woo-wee. I'm pretty happy with that. I hope that's showing up on camera. So anyway, now I'm ready to put on the first of many coats of poly. I came out here prepared to put a, another coat on. And uh, another coat of uh, wipe-on poly. And of course I was ready to abrade it first. And I touched this. And I'm telling you, it's like glass. I think if I do any more to it, I'll mess it up. Let me give you a little wider look. For the pieces I typically do, I don't get this kind of finish. It's got that chatoyance going on I was talking about.
So I'm going to call it good. I'm not even going to polish this with my softest uh, cloth that I have. It's done. So that's the back. Ready to flip it around and do the other side. Ooh, look at that shit toyance. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So let's turn this puppy around and get to work. I think I got a good fit here. I'm going to close these down all the way because I think they're going to need to be closed down all the way. Yeah, that's going to be good. Then what I like to do, I don't know if it's because I'm old and don't trust myself or what, but I like to bring up the tailstock before I tighten those jaws up and press into that existing hole and push my piece into the uh, chuck jaws nice and tight, nice and even. and then tighten it up. I've got about an eighth inch gap in the uh, in the jaws here so it's a real good fit. And I think I will leave the tailstock up there for extra support. I don't think I need it for a second but why not? I'll, I'll leave them there while I can. We are good. I'm going to stick with the half inch bowl gouge because uh, there's just not a lot of thickness to this piece and I don't want to waste away any more than I have to. So all I'm going to do now is just flatten the face and then go to work on my rim over here. Uh, we'll hollow it out after the rim is done because I need the support of the center wood there. Turning at uh, almost 700 RPM. Okay, time to mark out for my border. I think it's going to be about three inches. Refresh my memory here. We're at uh, we're at 15 inches in diameter. So rule of thirds tells me three inches here, three inches over there, nine inches in the middle. So three inches sounds about right. And this doesn't have to be exact, but approximately. Oh, you know what? That looks a little big. Such a small bowl for such a large area. Uh, let's see what... Uh, let's see what two and a half looks like. That looks better. In my opinion, which seems to be the only one that counts because there ain't nobody else here. Now I also have to determine if I want a raised lip around this bowl. So flat border, little lip, and then it goes down into the bowl. I think I probably do. I don't want it that wide. Maybe, uh, maybe half of that. So that'll be my lip. Going down into the bowl. And how am I going to get there and keep this edge thickness and keep this flat? Well, I don't know. I don't think that's possible. So I'm going to do a push cut in from the edge here up to the center line or so.
That looks about right. And I'm about 3 16 on this outside edge, which is also about right. Cool rest before you start cutting, okay? See if I get any damage there. That looks alright. That's when I wish I would have made that point tool I've been putting off making. Trying to decide what I can use to round this over well. And I've decided to go with a 3 8 inch spindle gouge. This is so, uh, it just really bothers me. I'm not used to doing this kind of thing and uh, I'm intimidated. One little slip of the chisel and then what do I have? I don't have any room to make another one. I'm going to put my glasses on. I just want a nice round bead here. So now I need to get this, get the tool marks removed from here. And I'm going to sand this through 400 grit before I apply my texture or spiral, I guess is what I'm doing. Because uh, I won't be able to sand it after the spiral, so i got to sand it first. I guess we'll stick with the half inch bowl gouge and uh, shear scrape it. I wish I was good at this. One more. I normally use a, uh, a soft pad because I'm normally doing contoured surf surfaces inside of a bowl, outside of a bowl, whatever. But in this case, I'm because uh, this is flat and I want it to stay that way, I'm using a harder pad. So I won't make you watch all of this. I'm starting with 80 grit and I'll work my way through 400 and then we'll get a spiral on there. I'm just laying out how wide I want this to be. Uh, so I've, I've laid out 9 16 on each side which is going to give me an inch and a half in the center and that's the part I'm going to decorate. I don't want to make really dark marks that I have to erase. But I'm going to go around 400 RPM because I'm working on the outside edge which of course is turning faster than the inside part that I did before. So there's 404 RPM. So it's just a guess. Let's see what happens. Well, I don't know if I love it or not. I guess it's not what I was expecting. It doesn't look like a spiral to me.
if you're thinking of getting one of these uh, Sorby spiraling texturing tools, I guess I would advise don't use my experience in your decision. I've seen some pretty cool work done with them. I just, I just don't know what I'm doing. I should have practiced more, obviously. It'll probably look pretty good with some color on it. And I still haven't decided about the color. Actually, I don't know how well this is showing up on camera. I think not very well. It's certainly a pattern, it's just not what I'd call a spiral. I'm going to do a little more work with this brush. And then I guess it's time to decide how I'm going to color it. I still haven't made that decision. I was really hoping to use my pens, my colored pens. So I have these sets of Tombow pens. And my inclination was to go with the colors that my wife likes. Turquoise and blue. So this is turquoise. Now these have two tips on them. I don't know if that's the brush or the pointy tip. I guess that's the pointy tip, so the other one must be the brush. I don't know how... It's, it's pretty soft. I wouldn't call it a brush, but I guess they do. So, turquoise on the larger portion. And I suppose we want to turn at a slow speed. Oops, probably not in reverse. I wish I had a clue. Turquoise, that's the lighter color. Okay, here we go. These are water-based. So my finish and sanding sealer shouldn't bother them any. There's the blue. Well, that's what I'm going with. I wanted this to be like the perfect piece because this isn't what I do and I don't think I'll be doing it again anytime soon. Well, now that I'm thinking about this just a little bit more, I wonder if I shouldn't uh, color this blue and this blue because this is all going to be natural in here. Boy, boy, don't I wish I knew. Come on, somebody yell. Yell really loud. Yeah, Phil, color it blue. Color it blue! No, don't do it, buddy. It's a mistake. I just feel like there's not enough blue there. Yeah, you can see what I'm going to do now, can't you? No, that's better. Well, you know, I think I am happier with that. Oh, don't speak up now, it's too late. Hold your tongue. This is what we got. Just double checking myself. Holy smoke. I got about uh, 3 sixteenths, less than a quarter anyway.
Time for sanding. Well, I think I've made a semi-major mistake here. I should have put the sanding sealer on before I put the color on. I think that's why it's not uh, not covering as well as I'd like. I couldn't find any directions to use those Tombow markers. Uh oh. Look at that. I got some blue. This is water base. This is a uh, sanding sealer made from shellac. It's denatured alcohol that you cut shellac with. And apparently that's interfering with my water based markers. No real damage done so far. I don't have anything on the green. And I'm afraid to touch it. But I'm going to touch it. Well, let that be a lesson to me. Still no real harm done. I wonder if I got enough on there to seal that color. Maybe I'll just go with one coat of sanding sealer, or maybe I'll put two coats on uncolored wood, and then hope that when I put the poly on, it doesn't cause all the colors to run all over the place. Lesson learned, put your sanding sealer on first. I wondered about it, and then I guess I kind of forgot about it before I put the color on. I do kind of like what it did to the blue. It kind of uh, evened it out, I guess. Except here it looks a little weak right there. But most places it uh, and there, I guess that's yeah, it's the end grain. Well, I'm done for the night. My night to cook and it's getting late. So we'll see you back here tomorrow. I need to take a minute and bring you up to date on what, what I've been doing. Uh, it's been a few days actually since I was working on this. And I was real unhappy with the splotching that this had going. And I tried uh, denatured alcohol on a Q-tip and tried to thin that out, the splotching. And I wasn't getting anywhere with that. In fact, it was making it worse, it wasn't making it better. So I ended up taking my... Uh, texturing tool, my spiraling tool, and went over this area again, and again, and again, and again. And I had just about all of the green gone off of there. I certainly had the splotching gone off of there, which made me real happy. I cleaned out those grooves, made them fresh, so there's nothing in there. And I do think it makes the color stand out better that way, and makes it look like a little less color maybe. And then I gently applied the green Tombow marker again. I have not applied any further uh, sanding sealer. I did apply it the one time to all of this. And of course I've applied it in here three times. And I've uh, abraded this with steel wool so it's nice and smooth, glass smooth actually. And this blue area is very, very smooth and nice. This, of course, has a little texture to it. Not as much as you might think. Uh, you can feel it now more than I could before. But it's still pretty smooth. I went over with 400 grit. And then uh, when I was cleaning this up the final time with steel wool, I went over all of this as well with steel wool. Just gently to try and smooth it out. And it's, it's pretty smooth. So now what I'm going to do... I'm afraid to apply anything on here because I think these colors are going to run and I don't want anything getting in those clean grooves. 
So I'm going to remove this from the lathe, leave it on the uh, chuck, and set it over here on the workbench and spray uh, the same, same stuff I was using, Minwax polyurethane, but I was using Wipe-On, and this is going to be a spray. So I'll try and do this about every uh, hour or so, get several coats on there and then I'm, well I guess what I'm going to have to do of course, each time it dries I'm going to have to put it back on the lathe and spin up the speed and, and uh, use some steel wool on it. So this is probably going to take a couple of days, sorry it's taking so dang long, I can tell you I wish it was done. So we'll talk to you later. So I've applied two coats of the spray-on poly. Uh, this is the gloss. And I'm not happy with the way it didn't get into the uh, texture. So now I'm going to apply it uh, regular wipe-on poly with a brush in this area. And then I'll uh, use a rag to wipe on all the smooth areas and to wipe off the excess from this. So hopefully that'll go well. And after I applied the uh, spray, I let it set a few days. And then uh, I've just used steel wool to smooth it out and clean it up. I thought the spray would get into these grooves better, but I, I didn't want to put it on too heavy, of course. and It just didn't get in there. But at least now that I've got the spray on on there, I don't expect the colors to run like I was getting. Better not, because I don't know what I'd do about it at this point. So I'm going to apply uh, two coats of the wipe-on poly using the brush and then the rag. And when I get that done, We'll see how smooth it is and see if it needs smoothing out. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. We'll see how it goes and then uh, I'll bring you back at that time and we will turn this around and see what we can do about that recess in the bottom. I may leave it. It's, a, it's not a deep recess. It doesn't look awful, but I just prefer to remove them when I can so that's probably what we'll do so I'll bring you back when this is done yeah very nice you see a little bit of chatoyance in there right in this area and the same place on the other side Looks pretty good to me. So we'll get this thing turned around and see about removing that uh, recess. I've decided not to remove the recess. Reason being, I took a moment to measure the thickness of this. I put my uh, calipers up here. They opened up about that much. And I'm no dummy. Okay, I'm a dummy, but I'm not that dumb. So, uh, I'm not going to trust myself to try and remove this without going through the bottom. I'm going to call it good. There we have it. It's done. It's 15 inches by inch and a quarter. Texture on the bottom. Texture on the top with color. Was it fun to make? Hmm. I don't know. It was different. It's not what I do. 
Uh, I like the outcome. I think it looks pretty good. I really like that blue. The green, I'm not in love with the green, but that blue is beautiful and I guess the green doesn't hurt it. That one is done. It's in the books. Finished. Time to move along. If you like this video, thank you for watching by the way. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up down there, would you? Comment if you like. Let me know if you like this kind of thing or if you like what I normally do, which is more natural pieces of wood. Do you like the texture? Do you have one of these gizmos that makes that texture? Do you use it often? Talk to me. If you're a subscriber, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I can use all the su subscribers I can get. If you're not a subscriber, why not? Join in the fun. Thanks for watching. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.